Oh. Welcome to Hivaroa and in the yeah the beautiful island of Hivaroa in um, where are we Marquesas, Marquesas. Polynesia. Yeah, so um, we're coming at you live because we've got a few fair few updates. Yeah, a couple updates on our situation after we just sailed from Panama to French Polynesia. Yeah. Hey guys. Hi. Got uh, Yolanda and Bastian from Baker Feeling Adventures. Baker Feeling Adventures, they're doing a nice little uh, tour around Costa Rica at the moment, actually. Absolute we're legends. And this close to seeing them, but um, tomorrow's going to have to do a lot of talking at the moment, actually, because I just got a tooth pulled out by multipliers. So. Yeah, so um, <laughs> dentist in French Polynesia, awesome experience, but it was multipliers pulling out the tooth. Yeah, so it was hectic, but. Um, yeah, yeah, so it means I've got to do more talking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so far away, yeah, definitely so close, but so far <laughs> only one country away. It was, it was like a border. We could actually see Costa Rica from where we were in Boca del Toro. So. We did wave. Mm. So anyway, do an update on us. We're um, um on our attempt back to Australia. Yeah. First sail attempt back to Australia. We're halfway there currently. Um, we are having some minor issues with um, getting entry into the country and everything like that, but um, yeah. <laughs> hopefully all sorted soon. Our boat's actually up on the dry dock at the moment because it was deemed unfit to sail. So What's the good word that they used? It's, it's a derelict boat, they said. A derelict boat, mm. um, which was forbidden from entering French Polynesia, which is now on the dry dock, and we will not be re-entering the boat. Yeah. No, so we sourced another boat. Um, we're currently waiting actually because we're trying to get some support from. Yeah, really. We are really curious about what happened in the last few weeks. <laughs> yeah. um, a lot happened in the last few weeks. Our mental durability got well tested. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, by, uh, I thought I had the short patience before, but that's, you know. She can deal with it absolutely now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, a bit of a brief update on what happened in the past few weeks. Um, Just over the sun gets changed the contrast. The boat, uh, look at the horse right there. <laughs> um, so, the boat we were on had many, many mechanical issues. So the battery failed, um, which caused the autopilot, uh, the navigation systems, um, no lights, uh, no fridge. What else failed with the battery? Bilge pumps was the main thing for Bilge us. pumps, so. We had to throw off three, or in the first seven days, we threw off 356 uh, buckets of water off the boat. You don't want to be doing that in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You need that. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't do that in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You shouldn't drink either. Um, there was a couple storms though, Bastian, um, with like, so there was points where the boat was like this, Jake's hanging on from this side with his feet dangling down here, um, which was, you know, pretty cool. We did think of you at that point. I was, I was just thinking of holding on at that point. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally, yeah, 90 degree angle. Um, and yeah, if we let go, we'd be in the middle of the Pacific right now, so. Yeah, so that was fun. <laughs> but yeah, so the boat filled up with water because there was a leak in, in the exhaust. So he hand emptied how many buckets? 356 in the first seven days, and it went up to a hell of a lot. Over 400. Into the sun. It's the shape of it. because that's what There you go. Sorry, guys. Just <laughs> adjusting here. Um, hey, Kelly. How you going? Mason Vents is another awesome travel channel. Jump on and check out what they're up to at the moment. Our home, home in lockdown. Yeah. Home but in England. They've got some awesome things going on. Lots of castles. <laughs> um, but yeah, so where are we? Boat breaking down. Yeah, the boat. Yeah, so essentially the last thing you want is a boat to be taken on water while you're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and it's your first time sailing. Um, however, that's what happened to us. And we weren't just taken on water, the entire boat essentially ceased to exist. Um, so Bastian's just asked um, how we go with food with the fridge. So we did have a lot of preserved food on the boat, so we did eat dinner, but Jake and I both did lose, gosh, what about between 5 and 10 kilos over the trip, over the 39-day sail. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good. Jake looks like he's got abs now. I've always had abs. They've just been hidden over a layer of fat. Thanks, Thailand, for all the cocktails. <laughs> Shout out to Stel and Delphi as well. Awesome little wet designers they are out there. Yeah. Over in Mexico. They're yeah. part of the reason we put on weight drinking all the cocktails with those guys. Yeah, there's definitely a few definitely a few head over there. Um so yeah, so the food was good. Um 
preserved foods, you know, look doesn't look the greatest, but I discovered spam, which is quite nice fried. Um, I'm surprised to hear myself say that. <laughs> but, um, were we scared? Not so much scared. Oh, uh, it was definitely time to be scared. Jack's tough, but there was definitely times being scared. Did you not see the smile when the boat was on the side? <laughs> Except when the pancake mix went all over my shirt. Because when the boat tipped, we were making pancakes, so I got covered in pancakes. It only took us roughly three to seven days to work out there. Our captain wasn't exactly all on board. Didn't exactly know how to sail. No, not <laughs> not quite at all. We've um, recently learned after speaking to um, some fellow sailors and new friends that we've met um, at Galapagos and again here in Eve Oa that a lot of the way the captain did things is completely incorrect. And well, Essentially, this was his third attempt at crossing the Pacific Ocean. In his first attempt, he went out for two days, turned around back to Panama. In his second attempt, he took two people out and um, were... They, they ended up busting the sail and the engine on the boat and ended up floating around the Pacific Ocean in between Galapagos and Panama uh, for 28 days before the Ecuadorian Coast Guard came and saved them um, and towed them 300 nautical miles back to Galapagos Islands. And what we're finding out now is that's the actual time when French Polynesia um, told them that your boat is now forbidden. Uh, to sail across to French Polynesia. It's a derelict boat and it's been deemed unfit to sail. Um, our captain didn't heed that advice and got two new crew. Um, On top of that, he didn't add our names to the crew register when submitting the documents to enter French Polynesia. So that's why we've had so many troubles on top of the boat not being allowed to enter. Yeah, so we weren't even on the register. And that's when we met Fred and his family and they um, pretty much said, you guys are... In, what is it, in clandestine, so we've come here sneakily. <laughs> We're like, no, no, man, we haven't done anything like that. We just jumped on a boat. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah def definitely Bastion takes a bit of bravery to do that. But from a girl who in Thailand couldn't navigate or couldn't tell you where north, south, east or west, just, and she literally navigated the entire um, Pacific Ocean from Panama to French Polynesia. Because the captain didn't know how to use his navigation system, so yeah. I had to figure it out. He's a bit of an older captain, and he didn't actually know how to use his iPad or anything like that. And Tamara, but he wouldn't listen to my advice, so you don't listen to Tamara's advice. <laughs> we have been eating a lot, Delphi. <laughs> we're, um, we're, we're currently staying with a local family in um, French Polynesia um, who took us in because... We definitely lost some weight. Yeah, um, but we've, we've been eating a lot recently. We, we recently went to a big barbecue when they had a full, full pig spit oh, roast. And and it, yeah, when they took us to the other side of the island and they put us up on, um, they had a pig, uh, pig on the spit. Pig on the spit. Is how you say it. And um, oh, there was lobsters, like a big bowls full of lobsters, uh, shrimp, everything like that. What was that, crabs? It was an amazing little little meal. Yeah, she's a... She's, Thanks, Kelly. I think I did well. She's named the MVP of the trip, I reckon. We also had to steer the entire journey. So most boats have autopilot, so you don't steer unless it's like extreme rough weather or, you know, something like that. But we had to steer the entire way because, well, after, after the first 24 hours. But... Um, yeah, when I heard about autopilot, I was like, oh, sick. We don't really have to do much, but nope. They... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but no, they didn't have to do too much with the autopilot. Yeah, and French Polynesia is absolutely this place is like Jurassic Park. It's um quite quite the spot. And I was looking up here at some incredible mountain while we're chatting to. I kept getting distracted because the fog and mist come over the top of the mountain, even though it's a sunny day. Quite incredible to be. Um, I'd say it's one of the last untouched kind of tourism kind of spots. Uh, which is exactly what you want. Yeah, there's not like a huge amount of hotels or anything here. Um, and also on a Sunday, there is one restaurant open. Everything else is closed. And the, the hotels that are here are more on the expensive side, but they are beautiful um, That and Airbnbs. But um, there's, I think, three restaurants on the islands. Um, yeah, three. Yeah. 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 Um, Two grocery stores and like there's not a lot but one of them's real expensive. Like most things are really expensive over here actually. But you can get a good French baguette. Yeah. <laughs> and the people here are beyond amazing. Yeah. No, they're absolutely wonderful people. It's like a, a common thing to just walk past and do the old 
Oh, how do you say? Kawanui. Kawanui. <laughs> we're, we're learning French and Marcasian on yeah. top of our Spanish. So it's going to be much yeah. for me. Tomorrow is dominating the French. I'm kind of sticking with the Spanish. I'm like, I just want to nail one. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at remembering the French, but my pronunciation is horrible. They tease me all the time. But um, yeah, what else? What, what's else on our agenda? So we're sourcing another boat oh, to come before home. Before we're about a week before we got here, we actually found out that it wasn't just taking on water, it started taking on diesel. <laughs> yeah, so the, the previous boat, um, you can see in our last video, all the buckets of diesel we're pulling out of the bilge was disgusting. Um, you're sitting there sitting on like, you're throwing buckets of water off your boat in the middle of the Pacific. You're like, oh, I can't get worse than this. And then it turns to diesel. It's like, okay, can get worse from this. <laughs> I also feel horrible having to pull the diesel off the boat because it's going into the ocean. Mm. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, there wasn't too many buckets, so not of the diesel. Not of the diesel. That was, that was towards the end, thankfully. That was just when we were getting it. Yeah, we only had to sit on diesel for a few days. Yeah. Place to see. Well, on a Sunday, it's hard to find a place to stay. That's how we ended up living with a local family. Yeah, we, we, we had, how did that happen? So we got told to get off. Yeah, so when we got here, when when we, when we arrived here in Hiva Oa, so um, firstly, Hiva Oa is not the right island to go to when checking into French Polynesia. You need to go to Nuka Hiva. Um, but we stopped at this island because of the boat issues and it's like on the way so it's like an extra day and a half sail to get to the next island so when we arrived the captain says to jake and i um all right guys you go um get off the boat uh, we were eager to get off the boat up to 39 days um he goes you guys go go find a uh, grocery store go find um where to check in go find gas and petrol and what else all, all the crap he goes and then on the way back pick me up some coke so we're like all, all we right. didn't know is it's actually illegal. The captain has to go first and check you all in. Like, I didn't know that. Obviously, we're first-time sailors, and yeah, we get to the well, the police station is shut, actually. But well, we were also desperate to get off the boat, so we just got off the boat. Yeah. And then we're walking down the street. We found a restaurant and went straight there because we wanted a cold beverage because <laughs> we also had to walk about two k's to get there. And then um, so we had dessert for lunch, which was delicious. And then we walked into town, found the police station, which was closed. So we kept walking in search of a hotel. And then we were asking locals for directions. And but most of the population here speaks French, which Jake and I knew nothing oh, about. Oh, we do not. <laughs> oh, <John Marshall. laughs> so um, at the perfect time, as we're asking this one local, someone who speaks English walks by and goes, oh, hey, guys, I speak English. How can I help? And um, brought, us, brought us to the local hangout spot on Sundays where we – Hung out with the locals, listened to some music, drank yeah. some beer. Sitting around like a campfire with like all the kids. Apparently everyone on this island comes to the one spot. They play a game kind of like lawn bowls or bocce. And um, they all come and drink and eat and play that game. Yeah, so it was really awesome. My tooth is killing me. Got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sissy. How you going? Hey, girl. Um, but, yeah, so that's how we, we met the, our local friend, Fred, who has um, – Later found out we were had no like we told him the whole story of the boat and all what the captain did and because we've only given you brief details still we're um he's one of the only two percent on the island that speaks English yeah <laughs> roughly two percent what's the chances of walking past and saying meeting someone like that let alone someone so kind mm. yeah so we ended up going and found out we were planning on sleeping on the beach opposed to going back to the boat and then invited us to come and stay with him and we've been staying with him ever since for what. Week and a half, yeah. week and a half now since we've been here. Yeah, um, so it's really last, good. Last Sunday, Sunday before, yeah, two weeks now we've been here. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe about what the situation is now for us. So we're currently waiting on approval from the gendarmerie, uh, <laughs> gendarme, <laughs> house close, which is the police here which we'll hopefully get in the next few days before we can um, – we'll fly across to Tahiti from here and jump on a, another boat to come back to Australia to head home. Yeah, we should be good. Um, so tomorrow we'll find that in for that out. We essentially just had to sit in loot and first say nice is to say come back with us as opposed to what would – well, his boat the, – the old boat's been taken out of the water and – it's going to get fixed and he's going to be forbidden from entering French Polynesia again. So he's going to have to leave and just go. Um, so 
they said, okay, if as long as Silver Fred said to the, uh, the gendarme that he takes full responsibility for us um, and we can go and stay with him. Uh, so anywhere we go, uh, we, yeah, anywhere we go, he has to go or anywhere he goes, we have to go, uh, which is really nice though. So. But yeah, no, it's not, like that just shows the, what's the word? The niceness. Niceness? <laughs> uh, compassion? Yeah, compassion. Yeah. It's a bit friendly, like the welcoming island vibes of the South Pacific. Yeah, they're very giving people. I still put that up there with one of my favourite places in the world. It has to be South Pacific Islands, like the Cook Islands, absolutely amazing. French Polynesia, absolutely amazing mm-hmm. so far. Yeah, so before we head back to Australia, we're hopefully going to be able to see um, Tahiti and Bora Bora and another little island over here, which is called Tahawawo. Watu. Watu. And Morea. And Morea. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it's going good. Hmm. But the, the more exciting parts of sailing, you get to see some really cool animals. The sailing itself that. is amazing. I think some of the dolphins before. <laughs> Hello. Jesus, to Brewster. Um, but yeah, so the, the upsides of sailing, we love that side of it. Like, it's so beautiful out there. Like, at night, I've never seen so many stars. Um, and then all the wildlife. So you just get turtles. And... <laughs> Can't wait to see the footage. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, Kelly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's so many wildlife out there. Like, there was points where we had like a thousand dolphins surrounding the boat, like, and that's not even exaggeration. A thousand. We're in a school of thousands, like you could see them from one. And out there, you just see the horizon, and we could see dolphins from one horizon to the next horizon. But we're in the middle of the school. Yeah, so that was good. Yeah, and we got um, pilot whales. Pilot whales. Uh, one time I have a nap. Jake doesn't wake me up for the pilot nails. Right. Nails. Whales. Whales. I yes. told the captain. I said. Or we should go and wake tomorrow. He goes, no, I'll let her sleep. I'm like, all right, but it's your funeral. <laughs> He's still in trouble. Um, what are the animals? Sharks, jellyfish. There's tons of, you know what the best thing is? It's not actually an animal. It's the phosphorus at nighttime. It, it's like a neon light that flickers behind the boat when you sail. And it looked incredible. It's even better at night when the dolphins swim next to the boat. So they're like a metre or two away from the boat. And then they jump and they dive in and then the phosphorus like trails behind them where they where they swim. So it's really cool. We had seals in I guess. Oh, yeah. The like seals, seals cool. that try and jump up on the back of your, your, your yacht, your boat. Yeah. What else do we got? I think that's a pretty general update yeah, from us. So what happens um, from here? What happens from here? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Finding another boat, and we're going to sail back to Australia. So we still got another three weeks at sea. Five thousand nautical miles. Um, hopefully on a better boat with a better captain. The reason we're having to do this is because there is still currently forty thousand plus Australians that can't fly home um, at this time because of flight caps. So Australia's capped all the flights, saying say there's like three hundred seats on a jumbo. Um, only 20 people will be allowed to fill those jumbos. Um, and when they fly back, it's they have to go to quarantine. Uh, the quarantines are capped as well. So all states have like limit 100 people per person, that kind of jazz. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And then like for a flight as well from where we currently are, oh. Oh, sorry, from Tahiti to Australia, it is, what was it, 11,000? So we're looking, so obviously the other option if we can't proceed through to get in this boat is. Uh, we'll be asked, well, we'll be deported. Uh, the only problem with that, well, there's a few problems with that, but <laughs> one of the problems with that is that the only flights going to Tahiti at the moment go through to LAX. Go out of Tahiti. So, yeah, it will through in or out go through America, so LAX, um, which would literally reverse everything we've just done in getting this far in returning back to Australia. Um, and we got a quote from a... Travel agent back in Australia, very travel, travel agent, Pippa Hillman. Uh, we can put her link in this description below. She will be able to help any other stranded Australians that might be out there or anything like that. Um, Pippa Van, sorry. But, um, yeah, and she works for Travel Partners, I believe. little plug for you there, Pip. <laughs> but um, she did a quote for us the other day as to how much it would cost for us to fly not only here to LA but LA back to Australia. Um, and it was 15... Uh, that was fifteen. It was five thousand two hundred from the LAX to Sydney, and it was two thousand four hundred for the uh, Papeete Tahiti through to LAX. 
So, and that was per person. So that's so it's about seven, seven and a half thousand each per person oh. just to get back to Australia. So we'd be back at square one if we ended up. We would be behind square one at the, if we ended up having to do that. Yeah. So we're hoping the gendarme come on board and the maritime services for Tahiti come on board as well and just let us push through to the next boat, which we've uh, already found and looking forward to boarding to finish our little trip back to the motherland. Bastian's mm-hmm. just asked if uh, they deport us, would we be sent back to Panama? No. So to leave Tahiti, the only flights out are LAX. So they pretty much just it's want us gone. Because like, of Corona, that is the only flight at the moment. So they would send you on that flight and it's to America. Um, there's nothing bad with us, but say we had say we had criminal history or something like that and we couldn't get into America, I don't know what would happen um, because that would be strange, right? Maybe you just have to do a connecting flight. And then you'd be stuck, like you'd be detained in the airport or something until your flight connected. But no, we don't have to go back to Panama. But if we did, we would jump on another flight to Costa Rica and come visit you, Basque. Or sail. We could sail us now, so we might sail up to Costa Rica if that happened. <sighs> but um, no, no, that should be all good. Yes, as a worst case, it's a seven thousand dollars flight for us to get back home. Um, but thankfully, we should be we should be okay tomorrow. Should be the deciding day of what happens with us. Yeah, so we have to take our um, we have to take our what do we have to take? Passports, obviously, to get stamped. I've still got. I'm a bit. I'm a bit. What do they call it? Codeined up. He's on some pretty pretty heavy drugs for his too. <laughs> They real cool to get this right. So in islands and that, they don't waste time. They pulled it out with a pair of multi grips. Like they just got in there and went, and then, and on the plus side, they, I don't know if you want to see this, but they let you keep it. Fair warning that I'm going to show a tooth here. So if you don't want to look, look away. <laughs> but you get to keep your tooth. How cool is that? It's like for a necklace, I suppose. I don't know. Souvenir. Welcome to Hiveroa. Yeah, well, I know. He comes back and hands me a tooth. Am I what I'm on this for? <laughs> you should be doing the talking to I agree, Ange. I said that to her. <laughs> yeah, but he can't help himself. It was his idea to go live. Yeah, well, on the drugs from the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we go now? Mm. But, um, yeah. Any other questions or anything like that? There's a, honestly, I think we've still just briefly touched what's happened. Yeah. Anything more specific, let us know. But um, we've told the story so many times to the police and the people here and that. We're just kind of like, oh, you know. Well, one of the main things is that like, we're still, we get messages from mates. Like my, one of my mates messages said, oh, how's Mexico going? I'm like, hmm, I haven't been there for a bit, man. <laughs> so we thought we'd do this just to update everybody. We've now been overseas for a year and two months now yeah so we like, before the pandemic started don't forget that strand of australians yeah <laughs> we didn't go traveling after a pandemic we traveled through a pandemic yes which probably yeah, i can see how that could be taken the wrong way but <laughs> but no we um yeah year and two months ago we left and should be home in the next few months so Mum wants to let you know she can't <laughs> message, but he's watching. <laughs> uh, thanks, Mum. Um, appreciate you watching. You need to. If she can't message, that means that she's not logged in. Mum, why aren't you subscribed to us yet? <laughs> That's one of the reasons we have to get back home is because of uh, tomorrow's mum or mumsies. Um, stuffed mushrooms. Oh. Or lemingtons. Mum, Jake wants your stuffed mushrooms. They are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, very, uh, from Bastion, very, oh, oh, Baker Feeling Adventures, very admirable how positive you guys stay after all those challenges. Thank you. Yeah. You just got to make the best of a bad situation. Like, it really doesn't matter. If you get knocked down, mate, as long as you can look up, you can get up. If you can get up, you can kick up. You just got to face your dreams and our dreams to travel, so. There was definitely days on the boat where it was hard and not due to the sailing or like even the order like or the steering or anything, but due to the captain, like it it tended to be quite an uncomfortable situation at times. But we just, you know, kept reminding each other how awesome the rest of it is, you know, how exciting what we're doing is and everything like that. Didn't matter how upset you were at the day, you had two amazing situations. well, you had three amazing situations. Sunrise, sunset and the evening stars. They're like Oh, I had you. Oh, well it's a bit cute. My Shelley. Yeah, that's it. Rolling with the waves. <laughs> but um, that really is a hectic 
hectic experience to be out there. You're 15 days away from any land and you, you start taking water and you're like, wow, this could be it. But um, During the storms, though, they um, the first day, the first storm was really cool because we're like, oh, this is awesome, steering in a storm and, you know, like because it's you go a bit faster and there's lots of waves in that, so it was a lot of fun. But you get absolutely drenched because there's where you got to steer. There's no cover, um, so you just you just got soaked through. And then by the second day, storm novelty kind of started to wear off a little bit. So we fashioned some pants out of uh, garbage bags to protect us a little bit from the rain. But that lasted. How long did the storm last? About seven days. It's a five day storm. Five day storm. So we have vlogged all of this, which tomorrow I'll have up on the website as well. Um, once she does her 80 words per minute of typing. Um, Down to about 60 now. You're back to 60. She doesn't type for a bit. But, um, yeah, we vlogged every day, so there will be probably a book. <laughs> You'd need a book for that. Yeah. It goes through all, like, the mental, the physical, the uh, what foods we eat, what they actually like. So if you're a first-time sailor, what would you bring if you're a first-time sailor? I already know what you're going to get. A good weather jacket. Time. <laughs> a good wet weather jacket. Jake has one. I didn't. I borrowed his a lot. I think about eight times across the trip, like Thailand, I start actually Sydney, I started, but Thailand is like, you sure you don't want a wet weather jacket? No. Well, I you think I would have learned my lesson when um, we went and visited Bag Feeling Adventures in Amsterdam. Of course, it was freezing. Yeah, and I still didn't buy one after when they gave us the tour around, tour around the high life. <laughs> But yeah, so wet weather jacket is high priority for sailing. Yeah. Highly recommend. Absolutely. The other thing is to double check your captain and, and the sailor. Like he actually, and before this, he was also kicked out of America. Yeah, he was asked to leave. We don't know exactly what happened there. All we know is he had like similar issues in America and was made to leave. Yeah. So definitely check who you're sailing with when you're sailing, I suppose. Um, but uh, yeah. I think I'm done talking. My, my tooth hurts. All right. Tomorrow I'll wrap this up. I'm going to feed a horse. Okay, all right. <laughs> We're going to go give Jake some more drugs for his tooth. Thanks, everyone, who tuned in. This is oh, our yeah. first. Thank yeah. you for watching. <laughs> and that was our first live session, so I hope we did okay. I'm not a, I'm not a horse. <laughs> <laughs> what tooth? Ange said what tooth. I think she wants to see you too. What? Did you say what tooth? Still got it. Give the fair warning again. Fair warning. That tooth. There you go, Angela. It was about this one here. If you want, I can I can bring it home for you. Yeah, it could be it could be your souvenir. It could be your Heveroa souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so thank you everyone for watching. We'll um we might try this whole live thing a bit more prepared next time. Um, yeah, this is our first time going live, but we had so many people message like saying, "What are you doing? Where are you up to? We need to talk. What's going on?" So. This is a quick way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a good way to message everybody. Yeah, but if you have any questions you want to know, let us know and we'll write them down and we'll put it in the next live interview. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We will actually be going live. I believe, like we're going to do it properly, I believe it's tomorrow, maybe, depending, because we might be going to an island on the... Said he reads. Uh, we might be going to an island uh, on the weekend. If not, we'll be doing it across the weekend live to give you the update on what's happened because we will find out tomorrow. Um, probably Monday, which would be Tuesday, depending on what country you're in, depending on where you are. Monday, French Polynesia, Tuesday in Australia. Um, hi, Joan, thanks for coming. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> we'll be live again in a few days. We'll, we'll post it up with a bit more warning this time, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll be able to give you a lot more information. <laughs> My sister has just lovely pointed out that I said he needs pain relief for his tooth, but he had it pulled out, so he needs pain relief for his hole. Yeah, my hole needs pain relief. Thanks, Angela. I'm glad I invited <laughs> you to tune in. Uh, now, it's good to see everyone on here. Absolutely. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you in a few days. No worries. Stay safe and uh, keep on keeping on. <laughs> Live that LD2 life. <laughs> all right, bye guys. All right, love you all. I'm gonna feed a horse. Go feed a horse. <laughs> I'm still here because I don't know how to end it. I think you just press the end.